With that, I'd be glad to take a few questions here. Kelly? I think we'd be seeing where the needs would be for to be able to utilize that money. Basically, just freeze it up where we can if we needed to. And there's mul multiple reasons where we could be utilizing to spend that money, whether that's for equipment, whether that's for supplies, whether that's for medications, or even whether it could be for test kits. Yeah, we're in the process of notifications today. We'll, we'll release that a little bit later today where they come from, but we're in the process right now of making sure all those notifications have been made. Uh, and and, we, and we, we haven't been able to do that at this time. Joe, Joe, is there a point where you'll let uh, employees work from home, state employees? We'll consider all options, but right now it's, it's important for state business, uh, state to be open for business. Uh, you know, we're, we need to be the front line here. I mean, the governor's office, for example, we're going to be open every day and we're going to be doing business for the people of the state. Because one, all the operations of state government has an effect on everyone out there in the state. So it's very important to me to make sure that all those facilities are open and prepared to be able to handle the public uh, at their time of need also. Okay, Ryan, Ryan. Was this, was this community spread, the latest details? We, we don't have any information on all. All we know is they're presumptive positive right now. I think later on today we'll be able to release that information with the Department of Health should be able to release that. But right now we're just in the process of notifications. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. You know, I th I think there'd be a number of things. They could be hospitals. If it ever come to that, we could use that. But I think testing sites also. You could have temporary testing sites, wherever that might be. If we wanted to make that more availability when that time does come, when, when I think when the, the process would kind of catch up with the demand, we might be able to do more testing at, uh, at different locations around the state. Yeah, I, I think the school issue is a local issue. Uh, I think for what we do know status-wide, probably there are younger adults are less uh, likely to be affected by the coronavirus as some of our older people. So I, I think, one, I think that's a local decision. I think that's what it is. They, they pretty well know the facts here. And so far, and thank goodness, we haven't had anything in our school systems. Yeah, we're seeing other states shut down schools. Do you all have any additional information you can share as to why we're making well, right now, we've not had any cases whatsoever uh, been in the schools. We know that for the students in the school, for that age bracket, it's less likely to be affected by the coronavirus on that. And right now, again, I think that's up to the local levels to make those decisions. We've also seen other states who have put restrictions as far as crowd size. Any there? Again, I think your mayors, I'm well comfortable with the mayors and decision they're making across the state. They don't know their areas better than anybody, and I think they can make those decisions on that right now. I think we make recommendations every day when we think, you know, you should limit that, and we're trying to tell people to limit from crowd gatherings, but I think to put a number on it. Sure people, some, some people might say, you're the governor, they're expecting the local agencies and the local leaders are expecting you well, I'm not. That's not come to my attention. And I'll say this, but I'm going to be meeting with the mayors next week. I'll be met. For example, we're trying to set up meetings with the mayor of Kansas City. We're going to go to those local areas and figure out, okay, what is it you want me to do as governor, and what do you want us to play that lead? But again, I think the responsibility of the local levels has to play a part of this. Okay. Pardon me, I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. Again, as the governor has always stressed, communication is really important. So we worked with our long-term provider uh, at that entity, Cardinal Glennon, and set it up on Wednesday. I reviewed all the scripts. I would highly commend you to look at them. We put them on our website so you can actually read what we um, have scripted to tell people. It's about 52 pages. Uh, like I said, I'm impressed with how detailed it is. Uh, it was brought to our attention today that you couldn't use outside area codes. Um, I, that uh, was uh, unexpected to us, and so we are correcting that today. Is but that uh, I don't know if it's been corrected at this moment, but when I left to come over here, it was in the process of being corrected. But again, I would just stress this is a long-term provider we've worked with for a long time. I'll be there tomorrow. I'm visiting tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll be there actually 1230 to go by and see them. But I, I would highly encourage you to use that. Uh, it is really... Uh, uh, Everything I think uh, you would want to know about COVID-19 in Missouri. And if you, you know, have trouble getting through on the line, you know, sometimes when I call, they'll say go to the website. 
uh, all the scripted answers uh, about anything you'd want to ask about quarantine or isolation or, or pregnant women. It's all there in written form. So uh, I'd highly encourage you to use it. Uh, you mentioned temporary structures set up for SEMA and the National Guard. Can you uh, talk a little bit more about what forms those might take? Yeah, I, I think any form. We use them for testing locations around the state. We might want to set them up temporary-wise. I mean, you've got medical resources there, whether it be a medical hospital if we ever was to need it. But I think all those resources come available then. We would be able to use it. But I think practically would be the more the thing of a testing situation there. I also, I also think when I made my remarks, it's, it's really important. I, I can't emphasize enough how much it was for when Washington University and Missouri come forward to help us with those testings. Uh, those are going to really speed the process up for us. It's going to make us a lot more ability to get people tested in the state. So I really appreciate them stepping forward and doing that and be the leaders in the state for that. And one follow up, when will the University of Missouri be getting those additional resources to begin performing tests? Yeah, we're in the process of uh, getting the certification. The, the equipment is there. Um, our anticipation is that we would we need to, we could increase our capacity to about 1,500 tests per day. Um, there's not that need right now, but we want to make sure that we're having appropriate preparedness in case that should arise. Um, Governor, do we have any idea about how many tests the state is capable of, of doing a day? I know there will be concern over not enough tests. Yeah, let me, let me let the gentleman who runs the lab there will be the best guy to answer that question. Thank you. That's a great question. I'm, I'm happy to uh, offer the, the answers to that. Uh, so currently we can run at a, at a minimum level about 68 tests per day, but we can ramp that up depending on the number of specimens that come in and depending on, on, the, on the load that we need to address. Uh, we can run about 168 to 200 per day, and as we need to, we can bring in additional resources, whether that be personnel, uh, bring in adi additional instruments throughout the laboratory, and we can run several hundred a day uh, quite easily. Thank you for the question. It's a great question. I hear there's a lot of testing questions out there in the world. Well, I think, one, we're trying to prepare for the money, the $13 million we're getting already that's coming this way. And I haven't heard the press conference today, to be right honest about it. We've been here at the office, so I'm not sure what the president did say or what is. But, I mean, any type of resources we can get, we're always going to be looking for that, however we can protect Missouri citizens. But I think more importantly, just how do we make sure we get the, the available test kits out there? How do we get that out there where we're making people much more comfortable with that? That seems to be the main issue we hear every day. So hopefully that money can be utilized for that, whether we utilize that if it comes to the state for the private sector to buy students of our own. Uh, we'd like to have that opportunity. But I'm not sure what all the president said today. Did Missouri need more than the $13 million? Well, I, th I think that's an unknown question for all of us. I mean, we don't know where this is going at this point, but I think we have to prepare for the worst. And we hope for the best. And, and I think by God's grace, hopefully this stays. Uh, in a reasonable uh, arena where we can manage it. And I think right now we're well aware of that, and I think we're doing what we can in the state of Missouri, again, with the medical professionals we have in this state. I think we're preparing every day to try to get better and better at what we're doing, and I think we'll continue to do that. So all the resources we can have on hand to make sure if things got worse, we want, and we're going to be able to use that. So I'm sure we'll be able to utilize the funding in, in some ways, whether that be through testing, whether that through be equipment, for multiple reasons. You know, one of the things, you've got to evaluate your situation. Every governor has to evaluate what his state feels like. At the time, we had only had one presumptive positive, and now we just had our second one. And then, of course, today we had them during the press conference. But, you know, you've got to rely on, okay, what is it you're going to do a declaration for, and what is the need for it? You can make a laundry list of things you could do, which a lot of people do, but the reality of it is, Right now, to me, in a state of emergency, is what are you going to do for the people that, that we need to take care of right now for public safety? That's the main thing right now. How do I get those services out there to those people to be tested to make sure they're comfortable with that? That's the priority one for me right now. And that's why I think that declaration is so important and why you do it. You know, so, and hopefully we're going to free up the resources to do that. And I think when you can see of all the people up here today with the universities coming on board, that is our main goal is public safety for this time being. Okay, Thank, you Thank you very much. much.